For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Telling you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new product from Bango. So with me here today, I've got the Bango Stargrove Air TC 600 XL. So the Stargrove is the name we've kind of very much known and loved in kind of uh, Bango's collection. And to be fair, the Stargrove sells probably is Bango's biggest selling collection probably ever, I would argue. Certainly because it's all about creating something that's good quality, spacious, uh, obviously quick and easy with the air, but in terms of kind of features, no frills. Gives you the cores you need, but doesn't compromise by having, you know, a certain degree of level of zip curtains, zip dividers, that sort of stuff, but gives you, like I said, the core aspects of what you really need day to day when you come to camping. So new for 22, we've got a brand new TC version or technical cotton, depending on what you want to call it really, or essentially it's poly cotton material. Now, for me, this is one of probably the more exciting products that kind of Vango introduced in many years because it's almost bringing we've seen air in a certain sense kind of be very high end and price point apps come down and this is almost the same but with poly cotton and air as a mix together so we've got a very tried and tested kind of design space and features but now in a more uh, kind of premium fabric at a much more affordable price point so what you find here is you've got a really beautiful kind of poly cotton material so it's a breathable fabric so Joys of this being is that on those sort of warmer days, the weave of the actual material itself can expand, allow air to pass through, and essentially be a lot cooler on the inside. On the flip side of that, on those kind of colder days, the weave contracts and keeps the warmth in. So it reacts very much to the temperature. So the joys this means is, is it does the best of both worlds. What you also find with polycotton to a certain extent is actually that it's, uh, it has a longer lifespan. It sits a lot nicer. You know, you probably imagine it to be about two or three times as the length of a polyester material. And it means it's perfect for going on the continent, again, as to, to those kind of hotter days. The way it sits, like I said, is much more nicer. You haven't got that sort of synthetic kind of flapping noise. It's very easy to get it looking taut and not have all those kind of wrinkles in place. Um, and in terms of overall handle, it's a much more nicer, softer feel to be around. And it does create that kind of more kind of like glamping kind of feel rather than, say, a polyester kind of synthetic material. So that's where I think for this works really, really well. In principle, to pit up is very easy. It took myself no longer than 10 minutes to pitch it and pack it. I'll pitch it up. And we've done our own actual pitching and packing videos. You can check that as well. Joys it is you can peg it down, pump it up, and guide it out. So it really is that simple. And that's a really great way to kind of look on how simple it really is. Each beam has its own individual uh, inflation point, which also is the deflation point as well. And you've got Mango's air speed valve in there. So it's very easy to get it on and off. And a bit more, should we say, idiot proof as well, which is obviously a big, big benefit. Really, the Stargrove TC is a free zone tent. So we've got sleeping, living, and then obviously an enclosed kind of canopy area. So one thing I do like is you've got this double bay um, kind of living area, hence the XL in the name. It really creates that sort of perfect area sort of to actually have a table and chairs and kind of sit in on a rainy day and still keep the kids sort of entertained. So there's enough room. In the name, it says it's 600 XL, which basically deters it to be a six berth. It only gives you about 60 centimeters per person, but Really, I see this being more as they have a very comfy four, uh, or you can probably squeeze six in at a very tight space. But for me, it's really more of a comfy four. And we have had couples who actually have gone and bought this as well. It's one of probably the big, it's a big but little uh, six person tent, I'll say that. And certainly with a polycon material, I think that really kind of ups it in terms of this edge. What we've also got is around the base, every single point we've got adjustable webbing straps. So it means that we get great tension, but also get a bit more stability and could tweak it as we need to. Front and back, we've got these kind of really nice kind of storm straps to give you great sort of bracing the roof and get that looking really nice and taut. Whereas on the sides here, we've got the traditional kind of guy ropes with its kind of runner, so you can get a little bit more play. The front door, as you can see, uh, kind of opens from sort of left to right as I am, or right to left as you see it. And it can kind of open up kind of halfway or sort of fully open. So you get the flexibility of kind of choosing whatever setup you want to go for. So if I open this up, We can see kind of how that works. You can basically then roll this front part directly back. And there's a little kind of toggle retainer to keep it all nice and neatly at bay. There's also worth mentioning there's a reinforced point just located here. Um, so you can actually, again, take the weight off the zip, certainly when you're opening and closing it. And there's a secondary zip as well. 
So if you want to go backwards when the panel's slowly down, you can always flap this open to get a little bit more of an airflow in without necessarily allowing dogs and the kids to quite happily escape from the camp itself. We've got obviously the front door, which we can see, which kind of naturally creates almost like a dead end space around that corner. We've also got a side door as well. The joys of the side door is actually the vertical door goes directly up. So it gives you the option of actually making this into a little mini canopy. So you buy some additional king poles. There's eyelets located kind of in the actual, uh, well, bottom of the door itself. So by buying some different king poles, you can bring that out, make yourself a little bit of canopy, give you a little bit more shelter area into the main part of the living area. If you don't want to kind of have it, simply what you can do, of course, is just roll that directly up. And again, it's got kind of a toggle points at the top here to keep it all and nice and neatly up there and not have to worry about it. I'd recommend rolling it from the inside that way because what you find is actually when water's going to sort of not catch in the door and then you've got to worry about drying the door out afterwards. Obviously, there's loads of crystal clear windows around the actual uh, tent, which you can see because you've got great visibility out onto the campsite. And there's also privacy curtains, which we'll look at in a second to get that sort of level of security as and when you see fit. I'll tell you what, let's kind of bring the camera inside and talk for a load more features and so look at the space the Stargrow TC has to offer. So then we've kind of swung ourselves directly in front of kind of the Stargrow. You can kind of appreciate it for how that kind of door opens. So we've got it almost situated kind of half open, but like I said, on the outside, we can actually kind of get that fully open just by unzipping that quite nice and neatly. So we roll up directly back, we'll unpeg it at the front, and this helps to create kind of this really nice big kind of open canopy. So if you want to kind of bring the outside in, again, this is a prime example of kind of how you necessarily do that. And again, you've got toggle points located here to kind of keep everything quite nice and neatly at bay if you don't drop everything off there. Now, there's no ground sheet supplied with the temperature section, but when you find a footprint, you get additional one through here. So that's certainly another reason why it's a good idea to have a look and sort of purchase a footprint. In terms of the overall space, you know, it gives you enough room here for a more happy for cooking unit. And because the door naturally opens from sort of left to right in that way, or right to left as you see it, I think this creates a really nice sort of uh, dead end space here, where your corridor is going to be more kind of flowing in there. You've got a little bit of space down there, but for me, I foresee this being more of the kind of cooking -y section here as well, providing you've also got a good airflow in the tent. Headroom, you've got kind of Vango's kind of pre-angled beams, so it helps to kind of give a little bit more of a boxier feel. It's not the same kind of level as kind of maybe sort of like the villa construction you see in like the Anatara or the Ventanis, but it does what it do needs to do initially to give itself a little bit more space in here. And certainly when you compare it to other brands, I think it's definitely more boxy. As we kind of come into the kind of divisional bit between kind of the well, awning area and the main living area, what we've got here is basically almost like a mesh barrier as such. So we've got mesh windows on the on either side and then a full frontal kind of mesh door. Joys of this obviously is you can kind of open and close it as you want to. The curtains at the front here have curtains that come down to kind of block it. So you'll block the visibility, but you'll still gain that sort of airflow, which is quite crucial really. Whereas the main kind of uh, mesh door open and closes obviously as you want to but you've got pro complete protection away from the bugs quite nice and neatly there. So we can roll that back as we would do with the normal kind of solid panel door. And again, keep that neat and tidy. Now the entrance way in and out of kind of that front awning section, uh, you've got kind of a little bit of a lip. This is designed to have to keep the weather in and toggle in place. Failing that, what you can also do is actually drop it down and then create sort of a trip-free hazard directly in and out of the actual sort of main body of the tent. Perfect for kind of going uh, for sort of push chairs or wheelchairs. It keeps all neat and tidy as you need to. When we step into the main living area, we've got a double bay kind of width, a decent amount of space for a table and chairs, like I said, for if it's a family of four or even up to six, you've got enough room in here that you can cope if the weather does turn. The thing I do, like I said, Oscar would be in polycotton, is to be better in kind of those warmer temperatures. Um, so it'll be a lot more, gives you the opportunity on even on the warm days to spend probably more time in here certainly with the ventilation with the panels here, and obviously the general breathability of the material itself. We've got a hanging point located for a lantern located not only in the middle, but located here as well. So that works really nicely. You can actually light a tent in the middle of the night. Crystal clear windows located on either side and obviously the side door which we saw from the external shots. All the curtains in here are toggle up. So you can kind of, what you do is, uh, go here I think, just untoggle them at the bottom. You've got a halfway point if you want to go to. So you can go kind of halfway, fade that, fully up to top and toggle them in place. 
just to get that sort of full coverage. It's quite a nice little pattern on there. Now, you don't want to use it. Of course, you can either dump it on the ground or put it back into its place where there was a little toggle, nice and easily accessible. At the back, we've got a really nice kind of six berth bedroom. As I saw on the outside, it's about 120 per two people, so only six centimeters per person. So you're not really, to be honest, going to get a double air bed in every single section of this. Most double air beds are around like 130, but if you were saying, say, a two, one, and one, as in a really nice four berth, with three individual sections, I think that works really well. You know, say, for example, parents in the middle, boy and girl on either side, everyone's split up from one another. There's toggle dividers between all of the sections as well, so you can get your own sort of space and own bit of privacy. If you wanted to kind of split it down the middle 50-50, you can remove all the toggle points, and there's actually located uh, a little kind of bedroom toggle point dead centre, so you can have the flexibility of actually making a, a three and a three berth rather than a two, two and two. Or you can open, take all dividers out, of course, already, but that was one big open six berth bedroom. For me, that works well, certainly when you've got sort of like camp beds and that, you more left to kind of rotate them round. Each front has got its own kind of uh, privacy door, and in the corners of each bedroom here, there's basically storage pockets located down there, so you can put things like keys and phones and that sort of stuff in the midnight if you need to find your torch, it's easy accessible from that point. There's almost like a low kind of sculpted part into the actual bedroom as well, so it's not so much, again, the trip hazard into the tent itself. We've also got the door on the left-hand side, but let's bring the camera in, kind of get a bit more of a feel to it, uh, and go through a couple of more features about the Stargrove TC. So as we kind of come in, you can appreciate probably the sort of depth of the awning. It's nice sort of space, one whole beam, obviously uh, windows not really in, but no initial curtains. You've also got a hanging point located here as well, so quite nice and neatly have that in the main kind of awning section for when you're cooking. But having that door fully back, really kind of opens it up nicely and then you've got the windows on either side to get great visibility. And that's what I'm talking about here, about you can see all the way pretty much around the campsite, works really well. And when we come in, we've got those double bayed kind of living section. So plenty of room, more than happily, in that area. Dark bedrooms, as you can see as well, so hopefully it gives you a bit more of a night, uh, better night's sleep and not necessarily wake up the crack of dawn. Ventilation points at the back as well to help with airflow even when you're sleeping because, you know, condensation you can't completely eradicate. And then with storage pockets down the side as we previously talked about. You have got cable entry points as well. So, so there's one located down the bottom at the front there. And there's also one also by the bedroom, behind the bedroom section at the back. So you can kind of happily, regardless of which way the lane's hookup's coming from, you can kind of come get it in without leaving the door constantly open. As we come out of the tent, I'm kind of a little bit of a wander around. You can obviously see the really nice colour, how well it sits. And actually on a slightly sort of breezy day, you're not really hearing anything in terms of kind of, uh, you know, flapping around that synthetic noise, which is one of the, my other loves of polycotton. With polycotton, of course, you've got to be aware of actually in terms of the price, it's a little bit more expensive. I mean, the Stargrove kind of helps with that a little bit. But it's also things like when you pack it away, it's going to be a little bit heavier in its kind of bulk weight when it's dry, let alone when it's wet. Uh, and when we want to pack these away wet, you want to make sure that you don't leave it in the bag for wet any longer than 48 hours max, really 24. It doesn't overly matter if it's going, it's still up getting wet, as long as it's not sort of wet in a bag, you know, being in a warm and voiced environment, perfect kind of a breeding ground for mould or mildew. So that's also uh, worth a point. But all in all, I think, as I said, almost at the start of the video, it's one of my probably favourite tents for 22, just because I think it offers something that's not really out on the market. It's a, a very price orientated polycotton tent, um, which again, there's no kind of frills, gives you the basics you need, but often that's what you need. You know, you've got an ample amount of space. Okay, it's definitely more of a, a tight six berth, a true four for me, but there's a lot going on. You've got the breathability fabric, the longevity of it, the quick and ease of the air, decent sort of living space, a good canopy area, which can actually be completely enclosed. So it's just a lot of tick boxes. For more information, of course, by all means, check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website. We've got more information on things like pack sizes, pack weights, floor dimensions, uh, individual specs. And of course, our pitching and packing video is also there, which you can check out if you want to see how quick, simple, and easy it really is to pitch. But all in all, I think it's going to be immensely popular, certainly from the price points of the tent, and certainly one to watch out for on the campsite. So that's our little video review on the brand new Vango Stargrove TC 600XL.